welcome. We're so glad you're here. If you're joining us in person or on uh, Facebook Live or Greenbrier Radio, all of those ways that we can connect is always a gift. So we're just glad that you're here. Um, we do have offering plates at each door and in the center of the sanctuary for those that need to know where that is. And we would like for you to greet one another today using Tony, things that Tony would say. So you might tell someone, hallelujah, you might say amen, or you might say, yes, God. So let's stand together. <laughs> We also have a volunteer table in the middle aisle there. We need scripture reading, we're readers, and there's always ways that you can help. Please sign up. We're going to stand now that you're comfortable and sat down. Let's stand up together and sing My Hope is Built. Let's stand and sing. be seated. Let us call our hearts to worship. God is my confidence. When I am alone. God is my confidence. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Do you remember what to say? When I am not feeling strong. God, God is my confidence. confidence. When I just don't know. God is my confidence. And when things go good, God is my confidence. Precious Heavenly Father, we know that you are our confidence. Oh God, we just thank you for these precious little ones that are willing to get up and say that you are their confidence. Oh, God, we just give everything to you, Lord, and we just thank you for every blessing. Amen. We love all the children, so stay put, and for those that are uh, not up here, we'd love for you to join us for our children's time. Mm -hmm.
hear me? Is my mic on? Okay, great. I'm going to tell y'all a story about a little fella named Punchinello. Punchinello? Yeah, I know. That was his name. Well, he lived in this little town where they thought it was a good idea that if someone did something awesome, like they were good at sports, or they got a good grade on a test, or they had a nice smile, they would pin onto that person a star. But if they thought that you weren't that good at singing, or they thought that you looked different than someone else, or they thought that you weren't nice, or they just thought that you were goofy, they would pin on you a gray dot. Well, everybody in that town would get so nervous because they didn't want to get gray dots. They wanted to get gold stars, but poor Punchinello, he was nobody's favorite. So everywhere he went, he just kept getting gray, gray dots stuck all over him. Maybe one person thought he should get a star, but look how many gray dots. But he's got so many stars. He's got stars and gray dots? Well, I only see one star. I so mostly he got gray dots. Three stars. Mostly he I got. See, okay. I see four. Maybe I see four. I see four. Okay. Well, mostly he got gray dots. And so anyway, anyway, he was so sad because he wanted to get stars. Well, one day he met this little girl who not only didn't have stars, she didn't have gray dots. And he said, "How did you do that?" She goes, "I can tell you. If you go see your maker, the one who created us." If you go visit him and spend time with him, then all those opinions of others, whether they think you deserve a gray dot or they think you deserve a gold star, they just fall right off of you. So Punchinello was so nervous, but he went into his maker's office, and sure enough, his creator, his maker, got so delighted to see him, he lifted him up and hugged him and gave him love. And as Punchinello started walking out of his maker's office, all the gray dots began to fall off, and all the stars began to fall off. Because he didn't worry anymore about what other people thought about him. He was only concerned with his maker and what he thought. You guys have a maker. Do you know who made you? God. Yes, God. yes. And so God, he doesn't give us gold stars or gray dots. He just says, you are perfect as you are, and I am here to grow you and help you learn yeah, and to he, love you. He has a lot of gray dots. Who does? Punchinello, are we back yeah. on that? Oh, yeah. my goodness. Okay. Yeah, but we saw four stars. Four he, stars. Okay. He has, like, nine gray dots or ten or eleven. He I like get it. Okay, let's, let's pray and thank God he doesn't give us dots or stars. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you do not judge us with stars or gray dots, but that you love us as we are, and you help us to grow and become people of love and kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Now remember, we've got to go collect the noisy offerings to help our community. Yeah. Say that you love me, don't say that you love me Cause I don't know how to be yours You say that you want me, well don't say that you want me Cause I don't know how to be yours I still like, like an orphan again 
heart high rates to confess Even as you hold me as I cry on the floor I still don't know how to you left me you don't say that you left me cause I don't know how to be yours you say that you want me you don't say that you want me cause I don't know how to be yours I still act like an orphan I guess High rates to confess Even while you hold me As I cry on the floor I still don't know how to be yours Signature lonely and not seen or forgot. I'm not walking out on you. So love me or hate me, I'm not going anywhere. Leave me, take me. You still bear my signature lonely and not. I seen or forgot I'm not walking out on you for the reading of God's word. Our scripture today is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, which represents all that Jesus Christ is and does, so that you will know with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have eternal life. This is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to have before him that if we ask anything according to his will that is consistent with his plan and purpose, he hears us. And if we know for a fact as indeed we do that he hears and listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us the request which we have asked from him. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Um, so before diving deeper into our scripture, um, I want to share a slightly embarrassing true story um, that happened a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, so about two weeks ago, um, my boyfriend, Jack, he's sitting right there, and I decided to go to Winter Place for the day. Um, and he skied a lot before, so he was good. Um, but I haven't touched the slope since I was maybe like seven years old. Um, so since everything was going to be new to me anyways, I thought I would just go ahead and try snowboarding. Um, you get it. <laughs> and I'll just say, like, I was feeling really confident going into it because um, I've skateboarded a lot, and my logic was they're pretty much the same thing, um, which they aren't, if you are wondering. Um, and But, you know, I will say my beliefs were kind of confirmed. 
um, sort of whenever I got started, because I took a beginner's lesson, um, and I was able to go side to side on the bunny slope, so I was, I was feeling on top of the world. I was like, I got this, like, I'm getting the hang of it. Um, so after, like, this little hour-long class, I meet up with my boyfriend, um, and we decide that I'm in great shape to go down a green trail, which is supposed to be, like, the easiest trail besides, like, the little bunny slopes. Um, and I guess this is the point where I should point out that for some reason in this lesson, they didn't really teach us how to stop. Um, <laughs> and so let's just say that I pretty much fell down that slope so much, I'm surprised I didn't turn into one of those like cartoonish snowballs that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, and if you want to hear more stories about how much I wiped out, you can ask Jack on the way out, because um, he has a lot. Um, but the point of the story isn't really to add to any commentary about self-confidence. Um, but I think the point is to really show that the feeling of confidence can have a really strong impact on what we do and how we live our lives. Um, in my case, I had an inflated sense of self-confidence <laughs> that didn't really do me any good at the time. Um, but I'm sure that y'all could think of examples in your own lives where you felt confident about something and it led you to make a change or make some action or make a decision. Um, so if you want to flip to the first thought jot, guys up there, um, I'll start with this morning's scripture. Um, and 1 John 5, 13 through 15 talks about confidence in God, confidence in our salvation, and confidence in prayer. And if we can acknowledge how impactful confidence can be, then we can see why these verses are so important for believers. Um, so the first verse of today's scripture, verse 13, says that I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This establishes who this message is intended for. It's meant for believers. Um, and the second part of this verse establishes why it's written. It's so that we may know that we have eternal life. And two things stuck out to me um, with the second part as I was looking over this verse. And the first is that it implies that at that point, there were people who believed in God that were still unsure that they were actually saved or that they had eternal life. And if we're honest with ourselves, I bet a lot of us have felt that doubt at some point. Um, you may have wondered, am I really saved? And whether you had those questions as a kid or just had them yesterday, I think we could find some comfort in knowing that other believers have had times of doubt since Jesus' time, and that God cares about us so much that he wants us to have assurance in our salvation. The second thing that stood out in the phrase, that you may know that you have eternal life, was the word know. And I think this helps establish another important aspect of confidence, which is knowledge or assurance. So let's imagine you're talking to someone and they come up to you and say, a triangle has four sides. I don't know why that would come up in conversation, but let's just entertain that. <laughs> um, but you know, you've seen triangles your whole life and you know with absolute certainty that they don't have four sides, they have three. Because you know this to be true, you might feel more inclined to tell them, hey, you know, a triangle actually has three sides. And maybe you would offer to draw a triangle for them so that they can know for themselves that a triangle has three sides. So what's the answer here? How can we know that we have eternal life? Well, verses 14 and 15 give us a simple answer, if you guys want to flip to the second thought, Jot. And so verse 14 says, This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. There are a lot of times that I've prayed for something, and God's answer was no. And at that time, I couldn't really understand why, um, because I couldn't really see the big picture, and I didn't understand what God's will was at that point. And sometimes when I look back on those times that God said no, I still may not understand why I may not see God's will at that point. Um, I could make some guesses and kind of assume that he put certain people in my life that helped me grow in my faith or that I was put through trials so that I could rely on him. Um, but a lot of times I just have to trust that it was God's will and I don't really need to know the details. But there is one thing that we do know with absolute certainty when it comes to God's will. And it could be found in probably the most quoted scripture in the world, which is John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So God sent his own son to die for us so that we will know him and have eternal life. That was God's will when he sent Jesus to live on earth with us, and it was his will whenever he sent the disciples out to share the gospel. And so if we apply that to today's scripture, um, 1 John 5, 14, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Then we can have confidence that he hears us when we ask for forgiveness, that he hears us when we ask for salvation. We can have confidence that he hears us when we ask for wisdom and discernment so that we can continue sharing the gospel with others so that they can also know him and live with them and have salvation. Have you ever tried talking to someone who you knew wasn't paying attention? You know, doesn't it usually make us want to stop talking and kind of hide in a corner? (laughs) Um, You know, don't we usually feel more excited whenever we know that someone's listening? Scripture is telling us that as believers, we can be sure that he's listening to our prayers, that it isn't just for performance or show or tradition, that they are personal and that he hears us. And the next part of today's passage is also reassuring, but can kind of lead to some questions. So verse 15 says, And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have what we asked of him. And without confidence, or sorry, without context of salvation um, that the rest of this chapter kind of helped establish, it's easy to hear this verse and think it's sort of like a genie in the bottle situation. Um, which, if you've ever prayed to win the lottery, you may know that that is not the case. (laughs) Um, But, you know, with the applied context of salvation and that his will is that we may know him and that he hears us when we ask anything according to his will, this verse is just another layer of assurance for us. It tells us that we could be confident that God is faithful to his promises, that when we ask for forgiveness, he is quick to forgive. When we ask for salvation, he saves us. And when we ask for guidance that we will better understand the Bible, he helps us. And so before I close out, I want to acknowledge that there are a lot of aspects of our life and our faith that we will never understand. Um, Because Proverbs 3 tells us that we need to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. However, I think it's clear it's important for us as believers to know why we could be confident when we pray and who that confidence comes from. And when we know this, it could change how we live our lives and how we share God's love with others. So let's pray. God, thank you for bringing everyone here together safely this morning. Um, I just want to thank you for this time to worship you and learn more about your word. Um, Thank you that you listen to our prayers and that you care about us and that you want us to have assurance in you and in our salvation. I pray that as we interact with others this week, that you will give us confidence to share your good news with them, and to share your love with them. Amen. Amen. Take some time now to think on the words that Sarah shared. Maybe light a candle for someone or for yourself. Use the altar as a place of kneeling or surrender, or stay in your sacred place until we pray together.
prayers for John Dietz, recovering from surgery. Juanita Barber, who has a hip replacement on Tuesday, January 17th. Margie Geiger, who has COVID. Continued prayers for Mary Liz Richmond, Georgia Smalley, Georgia Hayes, Lara Nunley, Bev and Rudy, Arletta Jackson, Tina Tuckwiller, Al Petrie, Jim Childers, and Don Seibold. And all of those unspoken prayers online, Radio Greenbrier, and in our sanctuary this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today as humble as we know how, God. Lord, we just ask you, God, to be with us, God, this week and give us the confidence that we can go out and share the good news, God, of you just being our Savior and our King. And, oh, God, we ask that you be with us, Lord, and we know your word says that anything that we ask according to your will, that it's a good and perfect plan. And, oh, God, we ask you to bless those that are sick, those that are shut in, God, those that just need your touch, God. Lord, we ask you just to help us to be in your presence, God. And God, we just thank you for everything that you do for us, God. And God, we're going to always continue to lift you up and praise your holy name. You are our creator, God. And we are so thankful that you are our father. God, we just love you and we worship you this day. In your name's sake, we do pray. Amen. As our benedictions today, it's such a beautiful gift that it just so happened that our scripture was about how God is our confidence and our summer intern Sarah who grew up in this congregation has come to a place because of God being her confidence that she can share with all of you the word of scripture. Look at Tony, another one who God has given her a confidence who came first saying, no, I'm not doing any of it. And now, <laughs> and God has given her that sweet confidence. And we want to be in prayer for Tony. She's leaving from here to go to Main Street um, Methodist in Ronsford and share a sermon there. So she is being called even outside of these walls. And then, of course, we have our dear Cody Christman, who was one of our interns who attends worship here. And now, Allison, if you'll stand up, she is our new intern that's working with our students. And this is Allison. She'll be sharing with us the last Sunday in January. Mary, Claire, and Kayla, they were interns. They're, anyway, isn't it so cool? <gasps> Michaela, there's another intern. It is such a gift that our God has created through this church and through the ministries here, people that are willing to serve and that find their confidence in the Lord and begin to share his love um, through word and through deed. So that's just such a cool thing, and I just wanted to celebrate that. Let's stand together for our musical benediction.
There are so many things to love about Lewisburg United Methodist Church. Our worship, our online worship, our programming for students, Bible studies, small groups, music ministry, on and on. And those things happen because of you. We're thankful you're part of our church family and we're thankful for your faithful giving. If you would like to make an offering or a tithe, there's a, several ways you can do that. You can mail it to P.O. Box 69, Lewisburg. You can always come by our sanctuary, our church office, and drop it off. Or you can give online through Facebook and through our webpage. However you choose to give, we just want to thank you. Because there are so many things to love about this church. And we're thankful that you're a part of it.